So, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, welcome to this webinar. I hope we will have an interesting and informative time together. First of all, before I start with my presentation, I would like to thank Mr. Florian Frü, Mr. Christian Brunetti, Mrs. Annika Kneifel from the company of Curasan, and Mrs. Franziska Knob from NDS Dental for all the support in the last time. Thank you very much. Also, thank you to Oemus Media, ZWP, and their employees, Corinna Mikosch and Maximilian Wolf, for the opportunity to make this webinar here and for the technical and very professional support. It is really great. Thank you for that. The title of my presentation today is Rich Preservation of Alveolar Rich Defects Using Biologized Bone Substitute Materials. Sir Edmund Hillary said, it's not the mountain we conquer, but ourselves. Setting new goals, keeping developing yourself, and of course, being open to, know, uh, to new methods, new therapy options, and new materials. That is the credo of our practice and of my life. And another quote or credo that is important for me is from a very and world famous philosopher, Li Jun Fan, no way as way, no limitation as limitation. This means that if you always follow one path and you are not open for new ways, methods and techniques, you're limiting yourself and you're taking away yourself the opportunity for further development and to become better. I'm sure most of you know this philosopher his artist name was Bruce Lee. When we talk about mountains, I live in Simmern, a well-known town in Hunsrück in Germany, and it's a place in the mountains. This is where I have my clinic. On the left, you can see our beautiful so-called Schlossplatz or our marketplace. It's a beautiful city to which I would like to invite you. About me, my name is Haki Tekjatan. I'm an oral surgeon and specialist in implantology and periodontology. The aim today is the presentation of a method, an open healing concept for the treatment of rich defects in the posterior region, a region using bone substitute materials made of a 3D collagen matrix and better TCP called Cerasoc foam from the company of Kurasan, biologized according to the LSCC protocol. Based on documented cases, I would like to present you a concept for the treatment of rich defects in the posterior region before implantation. It is an augmentation technique based on a controlled bone regeneration, the GBR technique that we know, and an open healing concept. For this purpose, collagen, me collagen membranes were left exposed in the side tooth area, covered with fib fibrin matrices, and the augmentation healed openly. The intention is to show you that using bone substitute materials made of a 3D collagen matrix and better TCP, Cerasoc foam, and biologized according to the LSCC protocol developed by Professor Sharam Ganati, in combination with an open healing concept, large rich defects can be treated, augmented, and also can be regeneratively prepared before implantation. Nowadays, our patients, but also our referring colleagues, expect implantological success from us. <clears throat> but also, they are expecting the aesthetic implantological long-term success. In order to achieve optimal, long-term, reliable and successful results, especially with implant restorations, and this also counts to any type of further treatment in dentistry, the preservation of the alveolar rich and of the soft tissue is an important precondition that we need. But under what conditions and with which methods and with which materials can we work? And also, what can we expect as a result? <clears throat> we have to take into consideration many aspects from planning to implementation and always taking into account the interface to biology in order to achieve our goals in implantology. In the past, the teeth were, shall I say, simply extracted. Today, we proceed in a much more atraumatic way. We are preserving bone and the soft tissue. We do a kind of surgical forward planning, asking ourselves, where should the situation go? 
What do we want to achieve? What can we achieve? What are the options that are available for us to reach our desired goals and results? And what we can say for sure is preservation is always better than creation. Various methods have been used for many years to preserve tissue or, as we currently have to say, to support the regeneration. The rich preservation is considered as a well comprehensible, predictable, economical, time effective and less traumatic concept. It is easy to perform and has become an integral part of the everyday surgical life. This technique preserves the bone and soft tissue and is also considered as an option or a use for the future if no implants are currently planned. But also not everything has to be viewed from an implantological perspective. Preserving the tissues is also important for bridges, fixed dentures, and even removable dentures. After tooth loss and the loss of the associated periodontium, the alveolar ridge is exposed to physiological resorption. As we all know from Araujo's histological study, which was published more than 15 years ago, in their investigations, they were able to prove despite the limitations that bone remodeling in dogs is about three times faster than in humans, that after two months, we have a significant reduction or resorption of the bone and that more bone is resorbed buccally than orally. Many studies deal with the question of the dimension changes of the bone after tooth loss or extraction, as for example by Jung, Tan, Schopp et al, and many more. If we look to the available literature and the data, we can see that horizontal bone loss is more pronounced than vertical bone loss. Horizontally, we have more bone loss in the coronal part of the ridge than in the apical part of the bone. A tooth extraction without the use uh, <clears throat> of bone preservation techniques and methods leads to a dimensional loss up to 70%. That is very important. In millimeters, we can say we have a horizontal loss of prox approximately 3.8 millimeters after six months. And in the vertical, we have a loss about 1.2 to 1.5 millimeters after six months. In this context, however, it must also be mentioned that we not only clinically observe important dimensional changes and resorptions. From a histological point of view, very important, and I would even say a decisive processes take place, as Cardiopoli et al. were able to prove in animal histological studies from 2003. They could show that a coagulum occupied most of the extraction site during the first three days of healing. But if we go further, at day 30, mineralized bone was present in 88% of the alveolar area. And beginning from the day 30, they could find out that the mineralized tissue decreased to about 50% by day 180. After six months, this is the situation they could find. The proportion of spongiosa accordingly rise to 85%. A systematic review and meta-analysis by Avia Ortiz et al. from 2014 shows us that alveolar rich preservation methods are effective in reducing physiological rich resorption. A very nice meta-analysis and a very, very good literature review by Dr. Dr. Markus Tölsch and colleagues. And Dr. Tölsch is an expert in the field of rich preservation techniques, impressively shows the indication for these kinds of methods. His diagram of the bone defect situation shows the regeneration potential very nicely. In other words, to say it simply, the more bone and walls of the bone there are, the higher is the regenerative potential of our treatment 
and of our operation region. And the larger the defect situation is, the more effort has to be made and the higher must be the regenerative potential of our bone substitute material that we use. Tölsch and colleagues were also able to prove and to show that any material can be used for the classic rich preservation, uh, for the classic rich defects, three and four wall defects. The differences are not statistically significant. There is no membrane necessary for four wall defects and a membrane is necessary for three wall defects. A resolvable membrane would make sense, sense in such cases both as a barrier and because of the lower complication rate and the good resorption rate. In this context, it is also important to mention that the soft tissue surrounding the defect and the original bone contour are also very important factors for our success. There is little, liter little li literature available on this, but an S2K guideline bone substitu substitute materials describes the schematic representation of the bone contour, the soft tissue cover, and the augmentation inside and outside the soft tissue cover as follows. Basically, we want to stay with image A using the bridge preservation techniques. This means that the best way to keep the soft tissue is in its original position, where it was. If the soft tissue collapses into the defect, this becomes more difficult for us to handle. Regarding the original bone contour, good results can be achieved within the bone contour or within the envelope by using rich preservation techniques. Here you can see within the bone contour. And if we are outside the envelope, as you can see in the image D, we can achieve a maximum gain of three to four millimeter using bone substitute materials and membranes of any kinds. This does not count for the sinus lift, for the external sinus lift or the internal. If more substance is needed, we have to use bone transplant methods with allergen, autogenous bone, and so on. To summarize up this diagram, we are trying to achieve the situation as shown in the image A by using our rich preservation techniques. That means it is the best to build up the bone and to keep the soft tissue in its original position and contour. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it must be said that we can never achieve 100% volume, uh, volume preservation. Many factors, as such as gingiva, phenotype, thickness of the buccal lamella, the loss of the periodontium of the, per of the bundle bone, but also bone physiological aspects, age, anamnesis, medications of our patients, are they smoking or not, and so on. Many, many factors are very important and have a significant impact on our results. Volume stability, of course, is important, but from a biological point of view, we need vital, high, and well-vascularized bone, and this is also important for our success in implantology. So as conclusion, we can say, in modern implantology, we need materials and methods to support the bone regeneration. The material we use in our clinic is Cerasorb foam from the company Curasa. This is a new type of bone regeneration material made from 85% beta tricalcium phosphate in a special 3D matrix made from 15% porcine collagen. But you have to say it's not at all new either. In orthopedic surgery, Cerasorb foam is the most used material in the world. As far as I know, it's even used effectively and very successfully as the world market leader. New because it has now also found its way into dentistry. In this context, I would like to present you a study by the Palm, Götz and Rupp Research Group. This is a split mouse study on 39 patients with Cerasorb foam versus Stupro. Controls were carried out after one week, one month, four months, clinical examinations, radiographs and histological examinations were carried out. And five cases were excluded. This study was decisive for me, why Cerasorb foam became interesting for me 
in my practice and why it is now our standard material for the rich preservation of three and four wall defects. I would like to show why in the following slides. In their study, biopsies were taken three months after augmentation and examined histologically, as you can see as an example. In this histology, we can see our cancellous bone, we can see fat inclusions, remains of bone substitute materials, compact bone, soft tissue, and so on. But what is special here? We would get maybe the same result with any kind of bone substitute material as we could see in the meta-analysis of Dr. Trölsch, right? So let's take a closer look into some cutout areas and go a little bit more into detail. What is special here is that we see after only three to four months lamellar bone and a high degree of mineralization as we can see here in the lower right by the orange areas. And that's extraordinary. Since we know from the bone bi biology that lamellar bone actually only develops after six to eight months. And that's very surprising in this study. And this was the, the reason why I started to work with this material. They were also able to prove that histologically and radiologically, there was more bone preservation than in the comparison group. Why is this so? It seems that due to the special 3D matrix structure, collagen and beta TCP and the ability to release calcium, terrasol foam improves and supports the bone regeneration. Of course, this assumption needs to be further investigated and proven scientifically, but that seems to be a very important aspect in the study. And overall, it seems to be an important, an important argument for the regenerative potential of terrasol foam. With this technical knowledge, and the scientific background I would now like to present you the case studies. <clears throat> the first case is an endodontic failure on tooth 1-5, as you can see apically here. A root resection was not able here to carry out, so we made here an extraction and we made a rich preservation with terrasoc foam. We have here a relatively easy case. I prepared a video for you to show you how we proceed. We have here a defect situation with the highest regenerative potential, a four wall defect. There is no membrane necessary. Rich preservation, we carried out with Terrasoc foam using a simple cross suture for fixation. And now we can watch together how we proceed. We always try to protect the tissue. We are working with special periotomes and instruments, in this case with the instruments developed by Carl Ludwig Ackermann, so-called clock instruments. The soft tissue we have detached, the crown fractured, an internal osteotomy was performed. If possible, we're trying to work flapless to avoid resorption. The fragments were completely and carefully removed. And then very important, the alveolar area and extraction socket must be cleaned very well. In our clinic, we are doing this with a microscope. This is a very important step to keep the risk of infection as low as possible. Here you can see the Terrasoc foam. You can cut it into pieces, very important. If you bring it into the extraction site or the alveolar, then it's very important to, um, to work very carefully to work, if possible, without pressure. It's very important um, not to destroy the special structure of the 3D matrix and of the foam. And then a second part coronally, and then a very easy cross mattress, cross mattress suture for fixation.
Here again, the same case summarized in pictures, the view from the vertical and on the right side from the buckle aspect. On the left, you can see the X-ray after extraction and please notice how homogeneous the material is radiologically almost identical to the surrounding bone. Right, you can see the situation two days later. And please remember the study of Cardiopoli from 2003. The demineralization after just 30 days that starts, maybe it seems to be an important aspect to bring a material into the socket and to avoid this demineralization. Now you can see the situation two weeks later, right, the buckle view. Please note the stable buckle contour and the preservation of the contour that we can see. Six weeks after extraction and immediately before implantation, you can see now the situation, very nice, irritation-free and above all, we have stable clinical conditions as far as we can see here in this area. The cone beam planning before the implantation we see very nice structures that suggest a good and a high degree of mineralization after six weeks. Maybe a very important point to start. And here you can see the video of the implantation and also how we proceed here. We are doing a metacrystal, just uh, maybe more palatal incision we're trying to do it as atraumatic as possible. No vertical releases. Here you can see a very special instrument developed by Arndt Happe. It's a micro, micro instrument. Then we can prepare our flap. And there you can see the situation of the bone, very important. You always see when you work with Cerasop foam, a very high degree of bleeding. And that's quite interesting. The first time I worked with this material, I always started to think maybe this can be an inflammation or something like that. But this is not an inflammation. This is the situation that you get when you work with the Cerasop foam. We have a very high vascularization and very, very good blood support. This is my experience, what I have. When I work with Cerasop foam, you can see our initial drilling. And step by step, the protocol of the implantation. Then viewing the inclination and the position of the implant. Then the final drilling, we worked here with a 3.8 diameter. And here you can see the insertion of the implant. First of all, we are working with our drilling unit and the last part of the implant, this is something that I still need, I'm working manually and the manual finalization and to bring the implant in the final position. I don't do it so fast, the video is faster because of the time. Of course, we have to do it carefully. And the removing of the insertion tool, placing the healing cap. And the suturing. And here you can see the final position. Here, this was one of my first cases. I still worked with the material to do a resorption protection, but now I don't do it anymore because I have the opinion that I don't need that. 
But as I said, this was one of my first cases. And you can see the final surgery. As I said, one of my first cases. That shows very nice the result that we have. When we do our rich preservation with this method. I think I can jump over. Here you can see the final situation. And after that, you can see again the case summarized in pictures very nicely. Healed bone on the left after the incision and flap formation on the right, the initial drilling. And then determining and checking the inclination and position of the implant. On the right, the insertion of the implant and manual insertion into the final position with a ratchet. And then the inserted healing cap and the covering dense tutoring at the end of the treatment. And here you can see the postoperative x-ray. After three months, the re-entry, we have still very nice and stable bone conditions, as you can see here. The placed gingiva former and adaption of the flap with, sim with simple single sutures. And then the postoperative x-ray control, this case, was then ready for a referring colleague and for the further treatment and the final restoration. So let's go to the next case. Here you can see a deep fracture 214, the extraction and the rich preservation with Telosop 4. Here you see the buckle view and the palatal view of the deep fractured tooth. Then careful and, if possible, atraumatic extraction. On the right, the Cerasop foam cut into size and placed into the socket, as I said, with a little pressure as possible and do not destroy the special, uh, the special structure of the foam. Then the vertical view and the application uh, of the application of the foam and on the right, the fixation with a simple cross suture. And also here, you can see the X-ray after extraction. And this is an actual case. It is now in the pre-implant planning stage. Here at the left, you see the case two days later. And at the right, one week later, after suture removal. Now we come to some more complex cases. In this case, the implant 4-6 has to be removed after unsuccessful peri-implantitis therapy. The implant in Regio 47 was already completely disintegrated, so it had to be removed before. An augmentation was carried out by a controlled bone regeneration GBR and open healing concept. For this purpose, a collagen membrane covered with Fibine mattresses was left exposed and the augmentation healed openly. The upcoming cases are based on the same concept. We see here the trepanation and the removing of the crown. Here is the view on the implant and the circular bone defect we could find. In this case, the implant was removed using a milling tool. There are special extraction sets from various companies that can be used. We do not use any systems or sets of this type in our practice. In this case, we worked, as I said, with a milling tool. You can see the explantation on the left and the defect situation on the right after explantation. The activation of the Terrasop foam with PRF according to the LSCC protocol from Sharam Ganati, developed from him. On the right, the placement of the activated cellus of foam into the defect, as you can see here. We inserted a collagen membrane over it. In this case, the oscite membrane. Beforehand, small pocket niches were formed 
periostole, buccally, and lingually with small, sharp curettes or special tunneling instruments as we know them from the periodontology. And the membrane was simply pushed into these prepared niches under the periosteum here in this area. There is no special fixation needed. We don't use any special suturing techniques or pins or something like that. Only push it into the niches. And then fiber matrices were made from PRF, which we then placed over the collagen membrane. You can also fold them. Professor Ganati recommends to put three matrices over the membrane. Some colleagues simply place the fiber matrices on top of it. If it's possible, I push the matrices like the collagen membrane under the soft tissue into the prepared niches. As you can see on the left, on the right, the area was sutured. In the middle, we left, um, we left that to the open healing. I give antibiotics when I use the open healing concept, but there are also recommendations not to do this. I think you have to decide that individually. Here you can see the post-operative x-ray control. The defect situation that we had was in this part about the half of the original length of the implant. And this is the completely area that we have augmented. Here you can see on the left the situation two days later. Here you can see on the right after one week. Here after one week. Here at the right after two weeks, at the left after suture removal. And now this is the first time where we can see the exposed collagen membrane. Before that, we always saw the fibrin. And after three months, you can see our pre-implant planning and the DVT cone beam. And also here we have very nice conditions you can see the situation before implantation and the planning of our implant. And this was the defect situation. And we can suggest that we have here a very high mineralization degree. And here you can see the corresponding operating video of that. First of all, the trepanation of the crown. We're just looking to the X ray. And then you can see the inclination of the implant. And you can see where the abutment is, where the screw is. And then in this case, it was a cemented crown. We are trepanating the crown, removing the screw, removing the crown. I will go a little bit further that you can see how we remove the crown here. Then cleaning the situation, inspecting, inspection of the situation. Then you can see here a metacrestal incision. And the situation of the implant and the circular bone defect that we had. Then with a special milling tool and according to that, the diameter of the implant, we are preparing the implant, removing the implant. You can see here now the activated Sarasot foam according to the LSCC protocol of Professor Ganati. And this, we bring it into the defect. We prepared some pockets lingually and buccally. And then placing that into the niches. No special fixation here needed. I like this technique a lot because you can see here, we have a thin phenotype. We don't need uh, the incision of the periosteum. We don't need uh, a big mobilization of the flap. It is very atraumatic, just only preparing the niches, the tunneling by using tunneling instruments and then placing our terrasol foam, placing our membrane
I think it is a very easy to learn method. We don't need really special skills or special instruments. You can do it with the, the materials you have, you're doing your extraction and you can using some sharp knives, preparing your tunnels and then making your rich augmentation. So here you can see the placed membrane. As I said, no special fixation necessary, no pins or suturing technique, as we know from other methods or techniques. <clears throat> so this is the situation. And then you see the fibrine mattresses. As I said, recommendation three, you even can fold it if you want to. Also place them into the pockets we prepared or the envelopes or the niches, you can say it as you want. You can lay it over it or you can push it under the niches, as I said. And then here the folding. And again, placing under the niches. I will jump a little bit so that we can come to the suturing and the suturing is quite easy. You're doing simple single sutures over the complete operation area. So jump a little bit and so you can see the final situation we have. And this is quite elegant because, as I said, you don't need the periost incision. You don't need a very complicated covering of the operation area. Um, you are not compromising the situation that you have here already with the SIN phenotype. And also the one of the big advantages is you're getting from the transformation of the collagen also the soft tissue and you are preserving the soft tissue in its original situation. This is what I said when we try to do to keep within the envelope and to keep the soft tissue in his origin position. So let's come to the next situation. Here you can see an extraction of 4-6, also an endodontic failure. We have a central transversal defect, the extraction, the open healing and the rich preservation with Sarasop foam and the LSCC protocol. <clears throat> Here is the overview and the status in various views and perspectives. Here on the right, you can see the deep buckle uh, defect and the highest degree, uh, degree of vocation defect that we have here completely. The detachment of the soft tissue and if it's possible, atraumatic extraction of the tooth. Here you can see how my assistant prepares the PRF, the IPRF, the solid PRF, and activates the Cerasol foam, as you can see here. On the left, you can see the preparing of the pockets and the niches, buccally and also lingually, with the special tunneling instruments from the periodontal surgery. On the right, you can see the Cerasol foam activated with LSCC PRF. And then the Sarasorb placed into the defect at the left and on the right, the collagen membrane placed into the previously prepared niches. Then again, th uh, three fibery mattresses over the membrane and then on the right, the sutures with the open healing. Here you can see centrally. Here we can see the postoperative X-ray I mark it and illustrated you the defect situation and the filled area. We have lingually a little bone, but crestally and buccally, we have a completely defect that we augmented with this method. Here you can see the situation 
<clears throat> at the left after one week. What you see here is not an inflammation. This is a, a particle um, of the of the beta CCP, and you will see that in the common pictures, it completely completely gets resolved. Here's the situation after two weeks, and the view to the membrane. Then after three weeks, then you can see the situation after six weeks, still very stable and very nice conditions. And here also the video I have prepared for you. Here you can see the defect situation that we have. Here you can see lingually how deep the defect is. You see a very deep pocket, no bone. I tried to show you with a mirror. You can see it was a completely defect from buckle to lingually. Some local anesthesia. And you can see detaching of the soft tissue with special periotomes. Try to be as careful as possible, of course. I will jump over the extraction. You can see again the internal osteotomy. Try to do everything internally, working flatless, removing the teeth carefully. Here you can see the next step. And the roots. So you can see here how we're cleaning the extraction socket very carefully. This is a very important step, as I said previously. Then with our special instruments, in this case, I use the tunneling instrument from Hürzler. We are now preparing our niches and our sockets, buccally and lingually. Of course, very important not to make a perforation, but I think with a little training, this should be not a big problem. Here you can see our activated Terrasol foam placing into the defect area. Into the prepared niches vertically and transversely completely. And yet again, our membrane. Of course, we can think about it. It was a very nice question. Uh, somebody asked me, is it possible to work without a membrane? I think yes. Um, I will now carry out some cases where I would try it without because the Terrasol foam already has collagen and it is also a barrier. And this is what we want. We want a barrier function. Maybe it would be possible to work with biologized and activated Terrasol foam and only with the fibrin matrices without a membrane. This should be also uh, something that I should think about and maybe I will carry out. So you can see now the fibrin matrices we placed again into the pockets, into the niches. No special fixa uh, fixation of, and no pins, no something. Only just working with the tunnel technique. And then the next three pieces.
And here you can see we have a very high volume. We generated a very high volume with this augmentation technique. You can see it in the buccal and lingual dimension in the transversal here from the vertical view, very nice. And then we are suturing everything with single sutures, very easy. Left to open healing. And it's very important not to do it dense, not too tight, and only single suturing. And this is the situation we have. Of course, we have to see to the indications. It's very important that, um, that we have no osteoporosis, non-smoker, that the anamnesis uh, is right, and um, that we have no periodontal problems here. But um, in most of the cases, it is possible to carry that in this way out. Here you can see three months later, the cone beam and implant panel was carried out. And you see a very nice vertical and transversal dimension here at this area. And um, we can suggest that we also here have a very high mineralization degree. On the left, you can see now the clinical situation after local anesthesia and before implantation. On the right, the augmented bone. And we can see very nice solid bone, some remains of better TCP, but in terms of bone condition, we have a very nice blood circulation. This was a very high quality situation that we could find with this method and remember where the defect previously was. This is for sure not a unicorn case. It's very important for me to say this open healing concept is something that we really do as a standard protocol in our clinic. Here you can see now the implant placement into the final position. And then the post-operative X-ray here directly after the operation. And then three months later, re-entry, the placed gingva former here, you can see on the right. Then left the adapted gingva with single sutures and on the right, one week later, after removing of the sutures, this case goes to the referring dentist for the final restoration. And here you can see the X-ray we did after re-entry. So what is the take home message? Using individual concept for the rich preservation adapted to the situation, of course, compromised and also large rich defects can be treated successfully and regeneratively. In favorable situation, complex two-stage as well as multi-stage complex augmentative procedures can be avoided. This reduces the trauma and the risk for our patients and shortens the time very effectively. With these words, I would like to thank you very much for your attention and I'm open for your question. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. It was very nice for me. Wish you best and hope we will see us again. Bye bye.